Man does not live on bread alone. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. That is the response of Jesus to the devil in the story of the temptation of Jesus in the desert. Jesus is tempted in three different ways by the devil as he prepares for his public ministry. Man does not live on bread alone is the response that Jesus makes to the devil who invites Christ or tempts him to turn a stone into a piece of bread because he is hungry. Greed and inequality fill our world today. We only have to look around us to see our supermarket shelves filled and bursting with different things that we do not need. And yet we only must turn on our television screens to see how many places in the world are filled with hunger and inequality. We are called by Christ to reflect on how we approach greed. Greed is a part of our fallen nature. Man does not live merely on material things, things that we gather to ourselves as in possessions or food or an abundance of things that we do not need. We are also spiritual beings. As human beings, we are an infusion, not just of the material, but also of the spiritual. Do we have a balance in our lives of both of these aspects? We, of course, need physical nourishment. We do need to eat. We do need to strengthen our bodies in order for the work that we must do. But do we just fill our bodies with physical food? Or do we also fill our bodies, our hearts, our souls, our minds with spiritual food? The Lord is calling us to find that balance between the material and the spiritual. Man does not live on bread alone, but he also lives from every word that comes from the mouth of God. When we eat, do we think of the people in our world who have no food? Do we pray for the hungry? Do we give alms for those who are in need materially? And do we think about how we can increase the spiritual food in our own lives? Every week we go to the supermarket for the groceries, for our family, for ourselves, and we parouse and look around the shelves to look for bargains or something tasty or the little treats that we all enjoy. But do we spend as much time looking for spiritual food, preparing ourselves to receive Christ, the Eucharistic food, as we come to Mass? Do we prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass worthily and well? In fact, do we still our minds before we enter the church? Do we pause for a moment of prayer to calm our spirit and our soul before hearing the word of God and receiving his body and blood? When we prepare to eat food, we set about getting ready. We get the plates and the knives and the forks. We get our friends, perhaps, and our family gathered around the table. We wash the vegetables. We cook the meat. We uh, get the bread. We butter. We get the sauces and the salt and the pepper. And we put them all on the table. And yet, when we come to receive the spiritual food of Christ in the Eucharist and in his word, do we make similar preparations? Or do we merely rush in, 
Perhaps we're a little bit late. Perhaps we are flustered. Are we prepared really for the spiritual food? Because man does not live on bread alone. As we come to the Eucharist, are we worthy to receive that food, the body and blood of Christ? Have we made a good and sincere and regular confession? Have we sat down to examine our conscience? Have we prayed and asked the Lord to give us the grace and the strength to receive Christ, that we might bear fruit in our own lives? Man does not live on bread alone. Perhaps we might prepare by reading the scripture lessons for that particular Sunday or weekday. Perhaps we could give a little bit of money to the parish collection or to a worthy charity. Do we stay and give thanks to God for having received him in his precious body and blood and having heard his word? You see, I go back. We are a greedy society. We are a society filled with seeking what we want to satisfy us and make us feel good. Perhaps that is not what is necessarily good for us. Our world has forgotten the balance of the spiritual and the material. Christ is calling us back in this piece of scripture to find that balance, to find the balance between the spiritual and the material. Man does not live on bread alone. Jesus was hungry, but he was not going to give in to the temptation of Satan merely to satisfy his physical needs. He wanted to point to us of a reality beyond our own bodies, beyond the physical, toward the spiritual. As a student studying for the priesthood, Part of my pastoral work was to work among the homeless people in Dublin. I went for an afternoon a week to the Capuchin Day Centre where we provided meals for those who came for, for physical nourishment. However, as I went around the tables collecting the plates, I found that it was important to talk to the people who were eating the meal there. And I quickly discovered that they did not just come for the physical nourishment that was necessary for them, but they were hungering for something more than just the food we were providing. They were hungering for a spiritual dimension to their lives. And as I sat with some people after they had eaten their meal, they wanted to share with me a bit about who they were, the experiences that they had in their lives, and the problems that they were enduring. And as we drew to the end of our conversations, oftentimes they would have asked me to pray with them. And as I prayed with them, I could see a load lifted off them. First of all, they appreciated that someone had taken the time to sit with them, to talk with them, to listen to them, and importantly, to pray with them and for them. Many people were hungry, but they also were broken because of the experiences that life had presented them with. They were a in many occasions addicted to alcohol or to drugs, or experienced the horror of broken relationships or financial hardships, which meant they had nowhere to live. And at the end of the conversation, not just were they fed with the food that we provided them with, but they felt restored, uplifted because of the conversation because of the listening, and because also 
the prayer that we shared together fed them spiritually. We embrace their humanity in its totality, understanding that their physical needs were only half the story. And after they had shared their lunch or their evening meal, they left, realizing that they had a human dignity restored to them that they had lost through the trials and tribulations of their lives. And when they returned a second time, perhaps the next week or a time after that, they always came up with a little glint in their eye, eager to share the story of how the prayer that we had said before had impacted on their lives. They often thanked me for praying with them because they realized that the prayer, the spiritual nourishment, was equally important and as beneficial as was the food that we provided for their bodies. And this is an important realization to make, that when we, as Christians, help the poor or those less fortunate than ourselves, remember also that the practical, material side of things, though important, is not always in itself the end of the story because man does not live on bread alone. And as I conclude this particular luminous, I want you to reflect on that passage that we have just heard. Man does not live on bread alone. I want you to think about how you in your life can forsake greed, identify what you are greedy about. Perhaps you overindulge in alcohol, or maybe you like to, I don't know, binge eat, watching a movie, eat too much popcorn or chocolate, and forget about those people who need what you have. And also to make worthy preparation to spiritually feed yourself by listening to the Word of God, by receiving Christ's body and blood in the Eucharist, by leading a life of prayer, by saying the Rosary, Lexio Divina, going to confession, family prayer, and study. So I encourage you, my dear friends, that as we have just heard that man must not live on bread alone, that we embrace that reality, that we are spiritual and physical beings needing God's nourishment in our lives that we may lead lives worthy of him. And so, as we approach the end of this talk, we ask the Lord to bless each of you, to give you the strength and the grace necessary to identify these things in your life and to grow closer to him all glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My life is a miracle. Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.